Hi, my name is Scott Baird. In the next few minutes, I'm going to give you a tutorial about how to use the basics of process model. This isn't going to be a comprehensive review of how process model works, its capabilities or features. It's just a basic tutorial. The first step in creating a model is to define the items that will flow through the model. These are called entities and can be found at the top of the palette. If you hover the mouse over the top of the graphic, you'll see the name call and its type entity. Entities are the things that will be transformed in the process. Calls, people, paperwork, parts, etc. There are many palettes and there are scores of graphics that are included with process model. These graphics can be imported from other programs. You can even combine graphics to create your own palettes. I'm going to pick two graphics that will work for calls. Call and hard call. Next lay out the activities or the steps used to transform the entity. These are the flowchart symbols. As soon as an activity is placed, you just type to change the name of the activity. Sometimes it's a real advantage to just lay out the steps without connecting them. If you're in a meeting and you're trying to uncover the steps but not yet certain of the flow, you could easily rearrange and connect the steps later. It's like having a bunch of sticky notes on a piece of butcher paper, except that you don't have to recopy it into the computer later. Activities can also be automatically linked. At the end of this chapter, there's a video on automatic linking to show you how that's done. We will take the call, then perform research, and return calls. If the activities aren't exactly aligned, it's not a problem. There are great tools to align and properly space graphics that you can use later. There are two resources in this model, a resource that answers the calls and a resource that performs research and returns the calls. Once all the graphic elements are in place on the layout, the connector tool connects the entity to the first activity then the flow that that entity will follow through the activities. If there are any escapes from the process, just draw in those escapes. In this case, in the first step, there's an opportunity to answer simple questions by the operator, and then the processing ends. Connect the resources to where they'll work. Notice the green dots at the destination. The appearance of these green dots ensures that the connection is actually being made. Notice connecting different types of elements creates different line styles. Arrivals, routings, resource connections. These lines are a legend to help you to quickly understand the diagram. Now just double click on each item to add information. The double headed arrow denotes an arrival or how things enter the process. The type of arrival can be changed by selecting the type drop down. If a detailed model of a call center was being developed, a daily pattern arrival might be chosen. Then for every hour of the day, the quantities could be entered to match the arrivals of the system that you're studying. Arrivals could also be read in from historical records to create arrival patterns, but we'll hold that for another video. So that I can keep this video short and make the numbers easy to understand, I'm gonna use one of the simplest arrivals the periodic arrival allows entities to enter the system on a defined period. Arrivals will enter the model every five minutes. Double clicking on the first activity exposes the take call dialog. The time field describes how long it takes for an entity to be processed. This could be a distribution. A distribution is a type of formula that represents the pattern of how long it's taken in the past to take a call. The process model includes the capability to turn raw data into one of many distributions. For this example, we're going to keep the number simple again and enter two in the time field. The lines drawn out of the take call activity are called routings. Routings are the direction and the condition for moving entities. By default, these routings are percentage routes. In this case, 75% of the calls are simple calls that can be answered just by talking to the receptionist. Notice that the complementary route has automatically changed to 25%. To collect statistics on certain types of entities, all that you need to do 
is change the name of the entity as it travels through the process. When an entity is identified as needing research, we'll call it hard call. And you just pull that down from the drop down. At the activity perform research, notice the input queue, output queue, and capacity. The input queue is where work's going to pile up if it's coming in faster than it can be processed. The capacity is where the work is actually performed. The output queue is where the work piles up after processing if it can't be taken to the next activity fast enough. In this example, additional workers will be added later to perform research, so I'm going to set this capacity artificially high for now. The time for the performed research activity is set to 20 minutes. The time for return call is set to 3 minutes. Resources are the people or equipment used to process entities. If a resource is needed at an activity, but is busy at another activity, entities are going to wait until the resource becomes free. This is a powerful tool in helping to understand the delays caused when you have shared resources in a system. Simply connecting a line from a resource to an activity will assign that resource to select the entity from the input queue, work on the entity and the capacity, and then release the entity to the next activity. Double clicking on the resource changes the dialog to reflect the resource information. The quantity represents the number of resources of this type that work on the same shift with the same pay grade. You can also add additional shifts and additional worker classifications. In this case, we're just going to have one of each type of resource. The amount of time that the resource is available can be changed. Shifts can be created for each of the types of workers or even the individual workers. Hourly cost of using the resource is entered. In this case, the operator makes $20 per hour and the staff person makes $25 an hour. Well, that's it. That's the main information that's needed to create a model. To run the model, select the Simulate button. This model just created has the ability to represent the behavior of a real system. Just the development of the simulation has also created an animation that shows where things go in the model and when they happen in relationship to other things. This live animation is critical in communicating complex ideas. During the animation, if you'll notice the numbers around the activities, the number above and to the left of an activity shows the quantity of entities in the input queue. The number below the activity shows the number of entities being worked on. The light above the resource shows the status of the resource. Blue means idle, green means busy, and red means down, or that the resource is unavailable. The option menu allows a zoom to any level so that you can show the animation in detail to other people. You can also run the simulation with the animation turned off. This allows it to run at incredible speeds. In the upper left hand corner of the simulation there's a billboard with quick statistics like the cycle time, the time that an entity takes from when it enters the system until the entity exits, or the value added time, the actual work time used to produce an entity, which in this model comes from the 2 minutes, 20 minutes, 3 minutes that we entered in the respective activities. The slider bar at the top allows the animation speed to be changed. Moving the slider bar to the right speeds the animation while moving it to the left slows the animation. When you get to the end of the animation, just click yes to see the detailed output. The output detail report gives an automatic in-depth review of all the areas in the model. Custom reports can also be created. In this model, the areas that I would look at would be, number one is the entity summary. This gives an overview of what happened during the simulation. On average, from the time a call came in until a customer was called back was 670 minutes. That's over 11 hours on 25 minutes worth of work content. All the rest of the time was spent on non-value added waiting time. Many of the built-in and custom graphs pinpoint problem areas to help you to discover changes that you need in your system. One of the built-in graphs, the resource states graph, shows how the resource were used during the simulation. In this model, you can see that the operator was utilized about 40%, while the staff person was utilized like 97%. Now let's move back to the build area. Simulation allows different scenarios to be tried. Because the whole system adjusts to changes that you make, 
It's as if you were running the real system with new suggestions. You might want to consider what changes you would make in the small help center. Many times people add staff to try and reduce the stress in performing research. You can add staff by changing the number in the resource quantity field. Sometimes people ask what would happen if I cross trained the operator to perform research. The operator can be assigned to perform research by drawing a connector from the resource to the line assigning the staff person. This makes the operator an alternate or secondary resource to perform research. Now to make certain the inbound calls have a priority, open the connector that assigns the operator to the take call activity and select respond immediately. That means that when a call comes in and the operator is performing research, they'll drop the research and answer the call. After finishing the call, they'll go back and they'll complete the research that they were working on previously. There are a lot of features that are like this in Process Model that makes it a great tool. We've already viewed the animation and we've verified that the model is working correctly. So I'm going to show you a way to skip directly to the output result with the new changes that you've implemented. From the simulation menu, select Options. There are a number of important things in this dialog, but to turn off the animation, simply uncheck the animation box. This will allow the model to complete the model about a thousand times faster. On the output file, let's check the same areas reviewed as last time. From the entity summary, the cycle time has been reduced from 11 hours to less than an hour. And we may want to find out what happened to our resources and what their utilization is. Now both the resources are utilized at about 70%. In this model, we are able to show how to achieve an 11 times reduction in cycle time without adding any resources. Simulation allows ideas to be tested under conditions that are similar to real life. You can include variability and shared resources for very complex and interdependent processes. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for joining us for this short tutorial.